MPLST basic configuration and also verification. In this video, I am going to talk about the configuration of the MPLST and also verification of the MPLST in simple form. You know that in previous video, I talked about the structure or, or the fundamentals of the MPLS traffic engineering, the component of the MPLS traffic engineering. In this video, I am going to talk about the basic steps about the a configuration of MPLST tunnels and also how we can verify them. After this video, we will start to configuring many scenarios with many features. But here, I am going to show you the basics of the MPLST tunnels and also how we can enable them or after that giving some advisory notification to you for understanding better how where we can configure the MPLST. Let me start with this scenario. In this scenario, we have R1, R2, R3, and R4. You learned about this scenario in previous video. This is the same scenario. And also I configured one loop back zero in R1, R2, R3, and R4. Also I configured OSPF. And as you can see, we have different bandwidth in this scenario. In this scenario, I'm going to talk about how we can configure the MPLST. Let me start to uh, start uh, the configuration of MPLST what, with some notification. Here you have the configuration of this scenario. It's so easy and you learned about this. You, uh, for example, understand the detail of this scenario in the previous video. Let me to start to talk about the MPLST configuration. The first thing that I'm going to talk about that is that in every MPLS scenarios, and for example, M every MPLS application, you need to enable Ceph. This is the first thing that you need to notice and you need to verify it. Look at here, we have a command in global configuration mode IP Ceph, okay? This is so important. If you don't configure the IP safe, you don't have any applica MPLS application, okay? But you know that in MPLS, we are using uh, LFIB or label forwarding information base. LFIB is residing on the, for example, a safe a structure and because of that you need to use the CEF. If you don't have CEF, you don't have MPLS. But the good news is that by default, in most cases, maybe in all cases, the CEF by default is enabled. Because of that, you don't need to configure this necessarily. But it's so important to understand the, that the CEF is mandatory for MPLS applications, for example, MPLS T. This is the first thing I'm going to emphasize that you need a IP CEF, you need CEF for MPLS traffic engineering. This is the first things. The second, for MPLS traffic engineering feature, features, you need to enable MPLS traffic engineering globally on the CLI. You know that, for example, for MPLS VPN, we have the command uh, MPLS IP, uh, IP on the global configuration mode and the MPLS IP by default is enabled because of that you don't need to configure MPLS IP for MPLS fundamental or MPLS, uh, for example, VPN. But here we have a command for enabling the MPLS traffic engineering. It's so important to configure this command. This is not enabled the, by default and you need to use this command. Look at here. This is the global command for enabling MPLS TE in the router. If you don't enable this command, if you don't configure this command, you can't configure MPLS traffic engineering. Look at here. MPLS. And after that, traffic, so is it traffic, ENG, not engineering. In configuration of the MPLS traffic engineering, we are using traffic-ENG, not traffic-engineering, okay? And after that, you need to use tunnels. This is the most important command that you should use, you should configure in every scenario. Don't forget, by default, this is disabled. And because of that, you need to enable it. Look at here, by default, okay, MPLS traffic engineering feature is disabled. You need to enable it. It's so important. That's it. And after that, we have one optional command. This command is not mandatory, but in most cases, we are using this command, the MPLS label range. You learned about this command in the uh, 
MPLS fundamental course or MPLS layer 3 VPN course. It's better for troubleshooting for maintenance of our, our networks that we are using MPLS label range between a minimum value and also a maximum value. You know that by default in the uh, MPLS, when you have MPLS, the uh, iOS can select the labels uh, with the higher value of the 16 or uh, for example, higher value 16, 17, 18. Okay, because the label between the 0 to 15 in MPLS are reserved and we can't use them uh, for, uh, for example, any network in MPLS VPN, MPLS TE, but the labels after uh, 16 will equal, equal or higher than 16 can be used. It's better to configuring a label range uh, according to one, uh, for example, uh, one policy. For example, in R1, we can use the label between 100 to 199. In R2, between 200 to 199. In R3, between 300 and 399. In R4, 400, 499. Why? Because when you are tracing a packet, you can use this label range for easier uh, tracing, easier troubleshooting, easier maintenance the network. This is optional. If you want, you can configure it. Or, and if you don't want, you can, uh, for example, uh, don't touch it and it's, it's okay. Okay, this is optional. But it's, I recommend to you that configuring this command MPLS label range in this course, in most scenarios, I'm going to configure MPLS label range. But as you understand now, the MPLS traffic engineering tunnel, tunnels is the only command that you need uh, for you need for a startup configuration of MPLS T because this is not it is not enabled and we need to enable it and uh, IPCF by default is enabled and also MPLS label range is optional command. This is the first thing that we need to uh, configure for every and each MPLS TE configuration. Okay. Let me to talk about the other features about the interfaces. The MPLS traffic engineering tunnels in, is the global command, but uh, for MPLS traffic engineering, we need to configure some features about the interface. Let me first start with the, the for example, explaining one uh, features about the interface, one of the specification of the interface, the bandwidth. You know that here, assume that, for example, we have one interface. This is the interface fast Ethernet 00. zero. And this interface has a bandwidth, or maybe this is, for example, serial or one zero or some other uh, interfaces. The serial one zero uh, in the, uh, for example, router has a value, we call it bandwidth. Okay, bandwidth is one of the specification of the interface, and this means that how many bits can be sent or received of, uh, with this interface in one second, for example. For example, you know that the bandwidth of the serial one zero uh, by default is 1544 kilobit per second, and it is equal with the 1.5 megabit per second. Okay, this is the a default bandwidth in the iOS. Also, you have a command for configuring the bandwidth. Okay, for example, here, if uh, in this router, you are selecting the interface serial one zero, and after that, uh, for example, using bandwidth, then the bandwidth uh, can be configured with a value, uh, for example, 1000 megabit per second. This means 1000 means 1000 kilo or one megabit per second. This means that this interface now from the view of the, uh, for example, iOS has bandwidth of 1000. This means that when OSPF or uh, other routing protocols uh, calculating the metric, the cost for this interface, they are using the 1000 kilobit per second for bandwidth. This means that in uh, uh, all of the scenarios, not in the MPLS traffic engineering, we need to configure the bandwidth of interfaces because uh, from the service providers, maybe you receive according the cost you pay, or maybe you receive bandwidth of 1000 megabit per second or 1.5 megabit per second, or uh, for example, 500 kilobit per second or some other values. Because of that, in all cases, in the traffic engineering, in the real IP routing, normal IP routing, you need to configure the 
bandwidth you have on the interface according the real bandwidth you take from the service provider because of that in most cases we need to configure the bandwidth of interface with correct value it's important this is not only mandatory for traffic engineering it's mandatory for all of uh, for example routing course for example ccmp route in routing ccmp route in ccna part of routing you need to configure the bandwidth of 